Hello and welcome to the Adalysis educational video series. In this video, we're going to look at how to increase landing page experience. So landing page experience is 39% of your quality score. So it's an important number to really work on as it can significantly improve your quality scores. And the fixes for improvement often increase conversion rates. So increasing your landing page experience can be a big win just for the account overall. Now there's a few steps to increasing your landing page experience. The first is diagnosis. How does it look and then where should you start? Then we have our landing page evaluation from a user and a content standpoint. And then finally, implementing the changes to increase your landing page experience, which will increase your quality scores. Now we can go into our actual accounts and we can customize our columns and scroll down to quality score and we can add landing page experience and landing page experience history, apply it, and then we can see what the numbers actually look like. Then we can filter this information and, and we can filter by landing page experience is below average, apply it, sort this by impressions, highest to lowest to, to see what that looks like. Now this is nice to do for your, your top impression pages to see where you want some improvement in your, your top impression keywords, but it's very misleading because it doesn't show you how that page is doing across the account, how many keywords are good with it, are poor with it, and so forth. So instead, there's a better way to really start diagnosing how a page is doing across your account, because often pages are used with multiple keywords, often in multiple ad groups. So if we go to reporting and click on the reports, we'll be taken to the report editor. We can create them. Now what we want to see is first our keywords. So let's add our search keywords. We want our URL. Now what's important here is your ad final URL is what you want to add if you're doing most of your URLs at the ad level. If you're doing keyword level, you want to use the keyword final URL. Now, if you're using both, you can go ahead and just add both of them. So next, what we want to see is our impressions. So we see how often this page is used. And then, of course, our landing page experience. Now, we could add more to this. Right, we could go ahead and we could add cost data and clicks and conversions and so forth and build a much more robust report. For a, a initial quick view, this is the minimum data we need. Now with reports, it's often useful. It's often useful to you know, save them. So if you rename it and then click save, you'll save the report. So now we're going to download this and look at this data in Excel so we can figure out exactly how each page is being used. Now we have our actual report, and we can just open our report in Excel. And I've changed the um, domain to be example as opposed to the advertised information. Delete the first column, select your data, and then we're just going to go insert and make a pivot table. So what we want to see is our URL, how many keywords are being used with that URL. So we want to see count of keywords, how many impressions does that URL have? So we want to see sum of impressions. And then we want to filter on landing page experience and only include data where we have below average landing page experience. Now we can click into our pivot table, go to data, and then we can sort it highest to lowest. So this page has 16 keywords and 3,600 impressions, all being below average. This one's 44 keywords. So what this is going to start to show us are the initial pages that are probably used in multiple keywords across multiple ad groups that need the most help. So look at your top impressions, and then we can also sort by how many keywords are used with each page to see where we have the most keywords that may need to have different pages or changes to the pages. So then what we can do is we can take these pages, go back to our data, and then we could filter. Right? We can make a filter for our information and then just look at what keywords are used with that particular page. 
if you have some keywords that fit different pages better, then you can just change the URL or where those keywords are to go to a, a more effective page. If not, then there's some more data we want to get into. Now, if you're using a system like Adalysis, this data is already placed for you where you can see here's the URLs, here is how many keywords have above average and below landing page experience, and then we can just click on them very easily. We have 905 keywords for this URL. So some of these aren't going to be related, such as computer shop and printer repair. And then what you always want to be aware of is when, you know, at least half your impressions, sometimes maybe 30% of your impressions are from below average keywords, you really want an automated alert, right, that says, hey, there's something wrong here, we want to change this. So while you can do this in Excel, you have to proactively do it. In the system like analysis, it's automatically built for you. So our first step is to ask ourselves, if we look at some of these below average landing page experience keywords, should they just go to different pages that already exist? If so, great, that's very easy. Now the second thing, if you're like, now that's a good page, right? The second thing to look at is how fast is the page? So you can go to PageSpeed Insights, analyze the page. Now Google will do a quick analysis for you of how your page is doing from a speed standpoint. Is it fast, very fast, slow? What's your optimization scores? And then you'll get automated suggestions that look at how to increase your landing page speed. So if your page is already fast or very fast, you don't need to worry about your speed. If you see you have slow pages, then increasing your speed can increase your landing page experience and decrease how quickly people bounce off your pages. Now if speed's not an issue, the next thing we want to do is actually jump over to analytics. So if we go into analytics and we go to acquisition, our AdWords account, keywords, then we go to site usage. What we can see is our bounce rates by individual keyword. Now, Google does not use analytics data for quality score. What they use are something often known as bounce back rates or dwell times, which is how often someone gets to your page and quickly reloads search results, which the search results page Google can use for experience. So bounce rates in a system like Google Analytics is a one page visit or a visit until an event occurs. So this is why bounce rates help as an overall indication, but aren't actually dwell time. So for instance, if I come to your page and I'm like, ah, oh, this is exactly the, the company I'm looking for. And I pick up the phone and I call the company and I spend 20 minutes on the phone. I even buy the product and I'm like, I'm done. I click the back button. I'm not a bounce back because I spent 20 minutes on the page. I am a bounce in analytics because I didn't do anything else. So if you have a, a site where users often get to a page and they spend a lot of time on the page, then you might change your analytics to include an event that triggers after 10 or 15 seconds that causes someone not to be considered a bounce anymore. They're still a one page visitor if they don't go to a second page, but because an event triggers, they're not a bounce, and it'll give you a better clear indication of bounce rates. If users come to your site and they're quickly jumping across pages, then you don't have to worry about it. So we wanna look at is our bounce rates and where do we have high bounce rates? Now, when we sort bounce rates on a large account, we'll probably see a lot of 100% because they're two clicks, one click, two clicks. So then we might wanna filter this data, All right? So we wanna include site usage and sessions you know, greater than maybe a hundred. Apply this and now let's look at what our bounce rates are for our larger ones. That would be a place we might want to really work on those keywords and then look at the content of the pages. Now we, so now we can also do this for final URLs. We come to the final URL, we can paste in the URL we want to examine and we can go to you know, site usage. And then we can look at what's our bounce rates and our session duration for these various pages. 
and then filter in and see what they look like. So if your bounce rates and your bounce back rates are high, right, it's an indication that users aren't finding the content they want on those pages. And that'll of course affect landing page experience because they're quickly jumping back to the search results. So then once we see we have good page speeds, our keywords are going to the proper pages of our website, then it comes to thinking about content. So we want to look at is say a landing page. So this is just the ad analysis landing page for quality score searches. So we can say, okay, is the content relevant to the user? Do we have HTTPS, right? That's an important consideration. Is it secure? Do we have privacy policies? Is the page visually appealing to users? And then we want to start thinking about what's the ad the user saw? And then look at our headlines. Is this similar to what the user saw? If we have an offer in the ad, is the offer clear or is it further down on your page of what the user can do? So often matching your headlines and your offers on your page increase user interaction, which decreases bounce back rates and therefore increases landing page quality scores. So don't think of, there's a keyword, I want the keyword on the page, Google will give me a better score. Right, what happens is you put the keyword on the page, users spend more time on it, Google says, oh, they're finding what they want. That can increase the scores. So if we look at this, say, well, we start with something like, how is visible quality score calculated? Visible versus auction quality score is a fairly advanced concept. So we might have overcomplicated this and, and we want to make it a little bit simpler and maybe start with, hey, you can easily graph your quality scores or see things over time. And so maybe if we had low experiences, we might just switch the page order around and start with something very visual from the user standpoint and then build some more complicated aspects. If that decreased bounce rates, then it would increase our quality scores. So with landing page experience, step one, you can see the experience by keywords. You can filter and see exactly how they're doing. But the reports and then your pivot tables will give you a better idea of what pages truly need help. Then we want to look at the pages along with what keywords are sending traffic to see do we have certain keywords that page that really should be going to different pages. Let's move that. Once we're happy that the keywords are finding relevant pages, we want to make sure our, our site is fast. Once we make some changes potentially to the site to make it quicker, then we want to look at the user interaction on the pages. Bounce rates a one page visit does not mean it was a low quality visit. If someone spent 10 minutes on your site and then left and went to one page, they're a bounce. So you might want to change this to use event tracking to do bounce back rates to more closely match how Google manages this. So once we see, okay, here's our, our, our benchmark for this, then we want to go and take a look at our content to see can we increase our content, change our content, match the ad and keywords user expectation after seeing that data on the, the page itself. And by following those changes, you'll generally increase your landing page experience and increase conversion rate, sort of a win-win. And of course, if you want access to all these charts, data, easy ways of viewing your quality scores, then you know, feel free to take a look at what Analysis has to offer as it makes a lot of this a much more streamlined experience for you.